Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. Uh, I've been geeking myself out over this idea for the last, I don't know how long. Uh, basically, it's a three-dimensional display, which is uh, a bunch of wires that run between two pieces of foam core. Um, and what it does, it was sort of inspired by an idea by by Jeffrey Hahn. He's this professor over at uh, NYU ITP. Here's his address. Uh, Jay Han and here's uh, the holodust is sort of the idea of what it was. It's basically a three-dimensional display that runs off of uh, a bunch of dust that's shot through, um, shot through some air and a three and like an ultraviolet light goes through and picks out what dust it should hit, and then it makes like a cube, for example. At any rate. Um, this idea is a much less sophisticated version of that, but since his isn't up and running, I decided I could make mine go up and running. Uh, what mine is, instead of having the pieces of dusk fall through in hopes of not having intersections, uh, what I did is I, I made... Here's a mock-up image of what I did, and basically, as you can see, over here is the point of focus, which would be the point that the projector sits at. This is the beam that the projector shoots. And these all are small slivers of light that are shot through. And each sliver of light is going to hit basically one point, which is going to be one wire, so that none of the wire casts a shadow upon another wire, because they're separated by two different slivers of light. And so that each sliver of light has one intersection, so that ideally by the end of it, by the time the light reaches from its focal point to the end, uh, no light gets through, which will not necessarily be the case because because of some issues uh, with the wire thickness, but it should be kind of close. Now, from an angle you should be able to see a three-dimensional image from any angle, but from the focal point you should only be able to see a bunch of wires. Because once again, if you're looking at it from here, every sliver of light that you have, every point of view, every point of focus you have, is going to be obstructed by one wire, one and only one wire. So as you can see from about, here let me zoom out, where is it, it's like right about, yeah, it's getting kind of close, yeah, right around there. This is where you can see one and only one wire in each position. Now, of course, all the black that you see is the background behind it, and that is uh, the light that would pass through. But at any rate, this is what the projector would be seeing, and what would it be casting its light upon. Now, um, what would happen is that it would project according to an algorithm written by a computer program that I'm working out. Uh, and you might be able to see like a three-dimensional cube, like right around here or something, or like a globe. Um, now the resolution's not going to be great, but it should give you the semblance of an idea of a shape. Um, and if you have a glowing floating orb, I think you get the idea. Um, now the importance of this whole project to me is that right now the work, we're working on three-dimensional interactivity uh, for cyberspace. We've been doing that for quite some time. You know, like planes and, uh, and first-person shooters. Um, but the three-dimensional interactivity is only f interactivity of the point of view of that person. It's not the p interactivity of the three-dimensional environment. And the reason that is is because there's no real way to manipulate uh, interactions between a human in three-dimensional space and an environment in on a flat screen TV, whether on a flat screen monitor, whether or not it's rendered in 3D beyond that monitor, um, and there have been efforts put forward. There's this thing called the P5 glove, which is basically the power glove for the Nintendo. And what it does is it 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 calculates where your hand is according to some ultraviolet light. Uh, it calculates the position and the tilt. And the orientation and everything about your hand um, and the flexion on each finger. But the problem with that project is that it totally flopped because there's no application for it 
uh, they were using it to play games to emulate the mouse and to emulate the joystick. And gamers obviously really quickly realized, well, if you're just going to emulate a mouse and a joystick, you might as well get the game control of a mouse and a joystick because they're just going to have a better resolution. Um, so this P5 is just sitting around because nobody actually thinks of cyberspace as a three-dimensional environment that's interactive. It's only a three-dimensional environment to look at. Um, so hopefully this project will will open up the idea of a three-dimensional environment that actually exists outside of a computer or outside of that which we understand as a computer onto a display that has actual ramifications in the 3D world. Um, so ideas for projects is for projects. Um, I was thinking maybe you can map where your hand is going and where it's you can map a, a path from your hand and then display it onto this onto this display so that you'd have a floating orb fly around and leave a trail or something. Or uh, you could have um, interactions between you can get the idea of how gravity works on a on a large scale by having two pieces of matter float in space around each other. Um, just whatever we can do to make concrete the idea that that cyberspace, that this information of three-dimensionality is more than just polygons. It's more than just things floating as ideas, but it actually has real ramifications if you can render it well.